All right, my friends, the new month is officially upon us, and what better way to kick it off than with a dividend portfolio update? Today, we're getting all caught up to speed, and I'll show you everything like my best and worst performing stocks for the month, all of my recent moves in the portfolio, and we'll discuss what my upcoming plans are here in July. But before we get to that, guys, I wanna hear from you. Leave me a comment below and let me know what's been going on in your portfolio this last month. Were you up? Were you down? Did you hit any cool milestones in your portfolio? Anything like that, I wanna hear about it in the comments below. Anyway, getting into how my portfolio performed this last month over here on my dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which you can start using for free. There is a link to download the spreadsheet in the description of the video. But starting here with my main taxable brokerage account over on Charles Schwab, this is currently valued at $58,936, which is about $500 lower compared to where it was at in last month's portfolio update video. So we lost a little bit of money in June. And to be more specific, according to Charles Schwab here, my portfolio saw a loss of about $635, which if we look at the breakdown, just just in terms of share price movements across the entire account, I was down over $800 for the month. So that was quite a big drop, but the dividends did save us a little bit, guys. In the month of June, I brought in over $172 in dividends with some of my largest payments coming from Chevron, who paid me $31.41 in June. So that was a nice payment. And also this one here from Johnson & Johnson, who paid me $41.15. This is my highest dividend payment from June. Now, if you wanna see the full breakdown and see all of the dividend payments I received this last month, and check out the video I have linked in the pinned comment, I go through it all there. But anyway, guys, that's gonna leave my portfolio with a minus 1.06% rate of return for the month of June, which as you can see, underperformed the other three major indices. The S&P was up 3.6% for the month, the Dow was up 1.2%, and the NASDAQ was up a whopping 6.7%. So the NASDAQ performed pretty dang well in June. But looking at this on a year-to-date basis, I'm still in the green, I'm still up 3.6%, but once again, I am underperforming the three major indices. The S&P is up 15.3% for the year. The Dow's up 4.8%, so I am trailing the Dow by about 1.2 percentage points, and the NASDAQ is up almost 19% there. And then lastly, looking at this on a year-to-date basis, my portfolio is up 11.35%, and once again, I am still underperforming the three major indices, as you can see here. But then with that, guys, compare my portfolio's performance to the holy grail of dividend ETFs. We're talking about SCHD. I did outperform this fund in the last month. SCHD was down 1.3%, but Actually, year-to-date, SCHD is now outperforming me with a 4.03% gain compared to my 3.6%. And the same is true if we look at the last year's performance. SCHD is up about 13%, doing pretty well, whereas my portfolio is up 11.35%. Now, even though I did underperform pretty much everything this last month, a couple of my stocks still saw some pretty substantial gains, with one of them even climbing double digits just in the last month, which is what we're going to take a look at next. Now jumping over and taking a look at my best and worst performing stocks for the month, it's not even close. Apple was by far my best performer with a near 11.5% gain just in the last 30 days, which is crazy. We can see that they really popped right here on June 10th after their annual Worldwide Developers Conference where they announced some pretty significant AI implementations, which was definitely well received by investors. And with this crazy climb in the last month, guys, that's gonna leave Apple with a year-to-date performance of 12.6%, really solid performance from Apple here in 2024, and they are right there at the top of their 52-week range. But then moving on to my second best performing stock for the month, this one was AbbVie, who saw a climb of about 5.1% in the last month, which is really nice. And AbbVie had kind of a lot going on this last month. Their ovarian cancer drug, Elahir, hope I'm pronouncing that right, is seeing some good results, and it also looks like things are moving along with their planned acquisition of cerebral therapeutics. And one of their heavy hitters, SkyRizzy, had a bid approved by the FDA to be used for ulcerative colitis, which means this guy Rizzi is now available to be used across four different medical conditions. So anyway, quite the busy month for Avi, and this is all in addition to announcing a new CEO. Michael A. Robert, who was previously the company's president and COO, will now be stepping into the role of chief executive officer at Avi, replacing Richard Gonzalez, who had been the CEO since the company's inception in 2013. So overall, like I said, guys, there's just a lot going on with this company in the last month. But anyway, this month's performance is gonna leave them with a year-to-date gain of almost 10%, 
And if we zoom out once more, looking at the last year, it's been on fire. Abvi is up over 26%. So both of those, Abvi and Apple, did really well for me this last month. And now, on the other hand, in terms of poor performing stocks, really the only one that saw any sort of meaningful decline was Blue Owl Capital Corporation, OBDC, who, as we can see, was down 8.5% in the last month. And from what I can see, there was no company-specific news that would have warranted a drop this substantial. And actually, prior to the month of June, <laughs> Blue Owl had been crushing it. The share price just kept going up and up. So my guess is that people are probably just locking in some gains, taking some profits, and that's what's been pushing the share price down. But still, even with this 8.5% drop in the last month, year-to-date Blue Owl is still up by about 5.2%, so they're still seeing a bit of a gain there. And then in the last year, if we zoom out once more, they're still up a whopping 15%. So overall, things are still looking really good for this company. All right, guys, now getting into all of my buys and sells for the month, overall, I'd say it was a pretty straightforward month of buying. As far as individual positions go, I only added to two of them, the first of which is Starbucks. And we can see throughout the month, I picked up 2.8 shares of Starbucks at an average cost of $80.47. And my Starbucks shares are starting to get up there, guys. If we take a look at my position over here on the spreadsheet, we can see that I now have 67.4 shares and my average cost is really starting to get down there. It's now sitting at $87.74 where just a couple months ago was up over $90. So I'm happy to see this coming down, but there's still quite a big spread between my average cost and the current share price. So here in the month of July, I'll probably continue to add more to Starbucks. I could probably get it across 70 shares and who knows, maybe I can bring this average cost down below 87 bucks. We'll see what happens. But anyway, the second individual position I added to was Johnson & Johnson. Throughout June, I only picked up one and a half shares, so nothing too crazy, but my average cost for these shares was pretty nice, 147.65, I do like that. And then in addition to these individual buys, I continued my weekly purchases of SCHD and VU, and throughout the month of June, I did some serious damage on SCHD. I picked up almost five shares at an average cost of 77.52, which if we look at my position is going to leave me with with 81.72 shares, I'm officially over the 80 share mark, which is super exciting. And with that, there is not a single doubt in my mind that by the end of 2024, I will have over 100 shares of the holy grail of ETFs. That's my goal. I want to hit at least 100 shares, and I'm extremely confident that I will get there. I feel like I'm so close that it just, it can't not happen. But then as far as VU goes, I only picked up 0.3 shares in the month of June, nothing too crazy there. And my average cost for this fraction of a share was $491.27. And with that, now moving on and taking a closer look at my Roth IRA over on M1 Finance, which I call Margarita Money. This is currently sitting at $10,575, so we are officially in the five-figure club with the Roth. That's very exciting. And it looks like in the last month, I saw a slight gain. It looks like I was up about 1.1% for the month, which is gonna leave me with a near 8% return so far here in 2024, and a 16.6% .6 return in the last 365 days, so that's very solid. And with that, if we take my main taxable account at $58,000, $936, that's bringing in $2,432 of annual dividend income, and add that to this Roth IRA at $10,575, and it's generating $287 of income, this is gonna bring me to a combined total portfolio value of $69,511, and my annual dividend income is now sitting at $2,719, which is really nice. This is actually a $54 gain compared to this time last month. Going into June, my projected annual income was $2,665, and if we look at this on a year-to-date basis, so far in 2024, I have added $246 to my projected annual income. Now guys, as far as my watch list goes, nothing has changed on this list of companies that I want to buy. It's still the same two stocks here. We still have Rollins and Vici Properties, and I do plan on adding Vici sometime soon, guys, but it's been tough for me to want to pull the trigger on it when there's other companies like, you know, Starbucks and Johnson & Johnson that I can buy below my cost basis. It's been a lot of fun being able to add more to those, so that's definitely gotten in the way of me adding Vici to the portfolio, but like I said, at some point soon, I would like to do it. I'm just not 100% sure exactly when that's going to be. 
And then as far as the companies that I might want to buy, I did make a couple changes to this list in the last month. First and foremost, I did remove Microsoft from the list. Obviously nothing wrong with Microsoft. I just decided that I'm fine owning this company through VU. I don't feel like I need to add it individually. I don't feel like I need to have that extra exposure to Microsoft. I'm dollar cost averaging into it through the S&P 500 every week and that's good enough for me. Along with this, I also removed Otis from the list. I just ultimately didn't have a lot of interest in this company. Like instead of adding Otis, I would rather just be able to put more money into something like Rollins if and when I do eventually start a position in that. And with those two out, I did make an addition to this list in the last month. I added LVMH, ticker symbol LVMUY, which as we can see is down over 5% in the last 30 days, and they are sitting pretty close to their 52 week low. And I think it's looking like a pretty attractive buy right now. And speaking of attractive buys, if you wanna learn about some more of them, then check out this next video right over here, where I'm telling you about three deeply discounted dividends stocks, all of which look like great buys right now in July. So click right over here to learn more about those and I'll see you in the next one.